Hello. Hey, we are at Tech at Low at Low, and we're gonna mix some fun, jewel, a little bit of jewelry crafting with some craft today, because we're making wine cork keychains. <laughs> you know you have them around the house, or your friends have them around the house, or your, you know, your family has them around the house. We didn't have any problem collecting several dozen in just one text. <laughs> so, you got these, you know, they're sitting in a glass jar most likely. What can I do with this? Well, my friend Tori, and I give her all the credit, she makes these for her uncle's store down on the bayou in Louisiana because they float. Yep, corks float. So if you do drop your keys in the water, they'll be floating. You just snack them back right back. Also, because there's some great stuff on wine corks these days. These guys are putting like verses on them and, you know, great illustrations and all kinds of fun stuff going on there. So they just make a fun, interesting keychain, but mostly you can commemorate. Uh, hey, remember when we drank this bottle of wine? You can write on them with a Sharpie. You can make Christmas tree ornaments out of it. Just tie a bow. We'll do that a little bit later. If, you know, that's what you'd rather have. You, you, and, you know, showers, weddings, all kinds of things you can commemorate with that. And it's super, super easy to make. So we'll start out with the essentials. Number 10, screw eye. Any hardware store, Amazon, you know, you can get them. number 10. That's long enough to be very secure inside the cork. And you can use synthetic or you can use natural cork. Synthetic's fun because you can do other things like paint on them, draw on them, stamp on them. So there's your screw eye and here is your finish washer you don't have to have a finish washer but just the name says hey this is a nice finishing touch gives it a little more stability too I think I think you're gonna hang some heavy keys on there and stuff or, you know like my keychain I have more things than I have keys yeah give it a little extra stability and it looks nicer so there that's also a number 10 finish washer so Let's get started. We got the wine cork. I like this one. Ooh, look at that nice pastoral illustration on there. Isn't that fun? Okay, so you don't need any extra tools. Take that finishing washer, put it on top, screw eye, and get it right in the middle if you can. You know, the thing about wine corks is they already have a pre drilled hole in them. Now, the other problem with wine corks is finding one that isn't a little ripped up from somebody's inexpertise use of a corkscrew. But again, we had so many <laughs> wine corks, we didn't have a problem finding these. You just screw, you know, righty-tighty, right? Keep going until it feels secure and snug in there. There you go. That's not going anywhere. All right. Now, we're going to do the other side, too. First, your finish washer. Oops. <laughs> then, your screw eye. I like this one because it already has a little bit of wine stain at the bottom. Kind of fun. You know, somebody had a good night. Yeah, when you dig up these corks, it'll bring back good memories. <laughs> there. Just tight, tight, tight. Go anywhere with this one now. We have our split rings. To actually make it a keychain, you're going to need a split ring. There is a, Tori taught me another secret about split rings, because you know I hate trying to hold these things open. I try to get them on there. Nah, you know what I'm talking about. So, if you have one at home, trusty staple remover. Get, get their split ring open. 
Stick that bad boy in there without stabbing yourself. And that holds your split ring open for you. <laughs> we love a good hack, don't we? Just squeeze it shut so it doesn't come off and stab you. <laughs> Very important. Decide which end you want to be the key side and what, and what side you want to be the decorative side. I'm going to go with put the name hanging, standing up. All right. So let's get that baby on there. Easier said than done sometimes. Look at that. Staple, staple remover. Who knew? Bam. There's the beginnings of your key ring. There's a bunch of ways you can do it. Today we're going to use some beads and some, <laughs> some glittery, tiny, tiny pom-poms. But I also am going to make some mementos for my friends. I have a bunch of these little flip-flop charms. You can see that there. And I'm going to make one for them. For each person who went to the beach with us this year. Just for fun. Now, let's start with the beads. You can do, you can use the pony beads. We have a plenty around here. You can use the tiny seed beads, anything you have laying around the house. Just grab it. Just make sure that you have either a jewelry wire, it's very fine gauge, that'll fit through the beads you're using. If you're using something like these pony beads, ah, you can use cording, waxed cording, because they have a generous diameter. All right, so now if you want to make, say, two strands to hang off the end of your key ring cap, depends on how long you want to be. I think that's plenty for a two strand. Just fold that baby, put it through this end. Oh, yeah. And twist it together just for the heck of it for now. And then you can string your beads on there. You can string one strand and it'll be really strong. You can make two strands. Oh, you can put in another cord, make four strands. How about that? And then you're just gonna string your beads on there, tie a knot in the end, and we have a decorated cord. So, you know, then you put in whatever you want. You can put like I said, that's you have to have a bead with a you know generous diameter there to fit this. I'm gonna put another clear one on here. Oh, it's just an orange just for the heck of it. Now you can put one string of beads and and I'll show you a different way to do it. You can tie it right up at the top. What I call a framer's knot. I'm not sure if there's that's or such a thing, but you know, the tiny knot you use when you're tying wire to the back of a picture that you were getting ready to hang. Just tie a knot in the end here. And we will have, yes, you know it, we will have some kits available for you. But they're going to have corks in them. We'll put some of this, we'll put some jewelry wire in there if you want to try that. We'll put some of this wax cording in there for you. And we have tons of ways you can decorate it. I'm sure you have stuff at home. If you're a crafter, you know what I'm talking about. Pull out all those old charms and things that have been rolling around. Okay, not. Come on, let's go. There you go. All right. There's one strand. There you go. And you can just twist them around each other here if you want. And start on the other strand. More pony beads. Now you say, what if I wanted to use those pom-poms? That's where our jewelry wire comes in. You can use that and alternate the beads and the pom-poms. I'll show you that in a minute. Mm -hmm. And some more. Just make 
sure you leave yourself a little bit of room there at the end for a knot. You know, I'm guilty of sometimes going, oh, that's too many. Like, oops, I think I overdid that one. It's always You can always trim off the end of the knot, but working with it when it's too short is never fun. So let's knot this up. Okay, there. Oh, two strings. Now, if you want to, you have a big bead here, you want to use it at the top and then hang the strings from that. Oh, that's even prettier. All right, so now we have pom-poms over here. Come on, Flins. Oh, you down. Dee, dee, dee. Nice glittery ones. So if you say you wanted to alternate beads with pom-poms, then you're going to need some jewelry wire. I'm going to use a little fine gauge wire here. You can use a bigger gauge. I have a bigger gauge over here. Okay, here. Actually, I'll use the bigger gauge just because it's easier for you to see. Cut you off a length. It's when you're Great jewelry pliers come in handy, the flat ones with a cutter. You know, a regular pair of pliers. So even a pair of scissors that you know you don't really care about because it's gonna get them a little dull. Cut you off the length of that. Now, if you just want one string, saying, yeah, that, that'll do me. Show you what you do here going to demonstrate on the split ring just because it's there. Oh, here's my demonstration. So it's easier to see with this piece of yarn. Clear my space here. I just call this a framers knot I because that's what I use when I put wire on the back of pictures. Pull up through there, just a short, probably that much. I mean, obviously, we're not going to use this yarn, but this is easier to see for demonstration. All right, now, there you go. And then you wrap it three times. One, two, three. So, you know, that's a nice little twist there. Take this end, and you feed it through the second loop, not the loop that's around the split ring. You can see that loop. But the second loop right here. My mother taught me this ages ago. It's come in very handy. All right. Then you simply pull up, tighten it up. Pull both sides and look, that's not going anywhere. You can trim this off. And then you have just one string. And you can bead and do whatever you want with that. Now, we're gonna cut that off. So that's just for demos. And we're gonna use the wire that I just cut. And do the same thing. Do a framer's knot. I'm gonna put like if you're putting one string on. If you're not, you can do what we did before. Push it through here. Tie a knot here. I did forget, y'all, I did forget to tie a knot between those two strings, see, so I hope you caught that. And then you can just string away. I'm gonna have two strings on this one. So if you want to use pom-poms and beads together, this wire is perfect. Bead, pom pom, bead, pom pom. Make sure you get a good, as close to the middle of these pom poms as you can. Obviously, keep them on the string. I like these because they have a little glitter, a little gold glitter in them. You know, like I say, we have met glitter we don't like around here. Bead, pom pom, or you know, you can do two and one, you know, whatever rhythm works for you, whatever pattern, whatever you have, we are working with all the different beads. All right, all right, so there's my string. And again, 
like this. You can't really tie a knot in it. You can, but it's probably going to come loose. It's better to cut off a lot of the excess. Make a loop and twist it around itself. Hard to see, isn't it? There you go. Yeah, make a loop. You know, look if you're tying a bread bag back together. You don't want any sharp things sticking out, so embed that little sharp piece that's left in the end of that pom pom. There. That's kind of fun, too. So there's your beads on a cord, which, you know, ignore me because I forgot to tie a knot in there. We're just going to do this. <laughs> and there's your one, there's your wire with the pom-pom. Or you do both sides. You know, no one says you can't just decorate the heck out of it. Now, I do like synthetic corks, too, because they're fun to decorate. So synthetic, as you can see, smoother. Plain. They tend to be plain. They're not always, because look at this one. It's already got <gasps> decoration on. So you got a little summer memory or a new baby to commemorate. You know, you open that bottle of wine to celebrate. Now that you could have it after nine months. <laughs> there you go. And you can stamp on them. I stamped a fish on that one. Or you know, we'll put a dog on this one, because who doesn't like a dog? Puppy dog. What a fun thing if you have a pet sitter, make them a make them their own key ring for that for your house key. And I think I will because we have an excellent pet sitter. And just roll it on. I'm gonna roll it on. Hold. <laughs> I smeared them a little, but that's okay. We'll do it again. Do the roll around. Is my doggy okay? So, stamped cork that's for synthetic corks. There are a lot, you know, you can stamp the cork ones, but it really doesn't show up. And most of them already have their own, you know, art that comes with them. So, how fun is that? All righty, and again, I said I would use a wire and Use that for this, maybe some beads to go with it. I'm really taking them off an old bracelet. It's like I said, if you have stuff you don't wear anymore, never, never, never get rid of it. Because look at all those great beads. We can make, they even look like sea glass. So I can bead the heck out of that and hang the flip flop at the end. All right, now we've done all this fun stuff. And what if you don't want to make keychains? What if you want to make Christmas ornaments? It takes one step to turn a keychain into a Christmas ornament. Ribbon. One step, one material. Easy peasy. Now, you know, we did use this pastel colors on this one. So if you have an Easter tree, you could just go ahead and make that. Make it, you know, hang it. Let's just pretend that they're, you know, traditional holiday colors. So, boom. Tie on a ribbon. You already got this great look to it. It's pretty lightweight, too, so to work on real trees and artificial trees. I'm just going to tie a double bow on this baby. And <laughs> voila, you've got a Christmas ornament. Or something to hang from a rear view mirror. You know, you can, like I said, these are versatile. Whoa. There you go. Now, see that loop that we made at the end right there? You know what that's for? It's for the Christmas ornament hanger. Hang it in there, and there is your commemorative Christmas ornament. <laughs> We're nothing if not versatile, right? So, we went for the gamut here. We went from super plain. You know, for the minimalist out there, 
Maxonistas get oh, bells and whistles. Again, we use cording here. We used wire there. Uh, you know, just a little something, something. You can stamp a synthetic cork. And then, of course, you're going to come up with your own great projects. And we hope that you will share them with us on your Facebook page, on Instagram. Tag us. Let people know, you know, here's what this great idea came from tech. And look what I did with it. Whew, flew with it, right? So, our kits will be available if you would like some. Um, we'll have the screw eyes, the hardware, the corks, obviously. We got lots of those. Um, some wires, some cording, and some beads and pom-poms. So, that'll get you started, get you a feel for it, and then you're just going to take off with all the little tidbits you have laying around your house. We do appreciate y'all watching. We hope you enjoyed this. We enjoy bringing it to you here at Tech of the Low Library, and y'all have a great day.